I'm going to be answering an age-old question of is it worth growing your own food? I'm going to be using two methods and I'm going to be comparing my loving hard work of growing my own produce here in this garden versus what I can just get in a supermarket. I really hope it's worth it. I have no idea what's going to happen, but let's get harvesting. So, I've done a nice little harvest of fresh veggies that I should have eaten a strawberry, but I haven't yet. And that was going to be my breakfast. Now, let's get the supermarket produce. I'm really sorry about the plastic. I think that's one of the best things though, is growing food better for you. Well, plastic free harvesting compared to all of this stuff. One point for the homegrown food. Now it's time to get a little bit sciencey. Too much. Thank you. As my mascara. Is it all right? If you're a long time viewer of my channel, you know that I love to experiment in the garden and test things out. And today gonna be a little bit more sciencey. So I'm gonna use two different methods. Firstly, the method of doing a blind taste test a little bit later on to see if I can identify um, which is which. And the other method is using something called a refractometer. Now a refractometer is this fun little device which measures bricks. Bricks is the sugar content of produce. Now this is often used before harvesting grapes to make sure they're at the right sweetness if you're gonna be making some wine. And bricks is related to nutrient density. So usually the higher the bricks level, the higher the nutrient and mineral density of your produce. So in terms of us as domestic gardeners, this is kind of like the closest that we can get to gaining quite a nice understanding with how our produce is nutritionally um, and that that sweetness also comes across I think in flavor. The refractometer works by using a garlic press where you press the crops and then you get out a little bit of juice and it's that juice that you then measure. So I am comparing my homegrown food which this is essentially all of this has come from first year of growing, so it's fairly new soil, but treating it using no degrow methods versus non-organic supermarket food. And it's gonna be, I have no idea what's gonna happen. I've never done this before. So let's get started. I've also just remembered, I bought tomatoes to compare and I noticed the first two ripe tomatoes were ready yesterday and I'm not in the habit of harvesting tomatoes and it's now starting. So before I start, I need those. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna test out is the spinach. So I'm just gonna roll it up into a bowl and pop it in, squeeze out what I can, and then close the lid to make sure there's good coverage. So now with the refractometer, you hold it up to the light and you have a look through. And I would give that a five and a half for the supermarket spinach. Now I'm gonna do the exact same with my own spinach that I've just harvested. So again, Pack it in, maybe a bit too much. So show how often I use a garlic press. Oh my gosh, right, so this is already immediately a lot more juicy. I've, I've barely had to squeeze it and there's a lot of juice there. All right, just close that. Two. It is two. Homegrown, it is actually two. I'll take a photo to prove it. So at the moment, supermarket's winning. So just before we look at the chart for the spinach, I got some sugar snap pea, which I am now going to see what that registers as. So this sugar snap pea from the supermarket is four. Let's try ours. My own sugar snap. Again, nice and juicy. Oh, okay, it, it wins. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I was like, this, this could have been, this could have been an interesting video. No, so that's a six and a half. And just quickly, a big thank you to Asus for sponsoring this video. This is the Asus ZenBook S13 OLED laptop. It's a great little thing, and we're using it for 
firstly the charts to be able to compare the different ratings of the vegetables, but also so I can use sheets to keep a track of all of these things because I'm not just using the refractometer today, it's gonna to be for the rest of the season. I wanna keep it all in one place. This laptop and my homegrown produce have more in common than you think. They come with plastic free packaging, unlike what I got from the supermarket. And also the ink printed on the box is made out of vegetables, just not my vegetables. Now you probably think this is a very nice cover that I've put on the laptop, but it's actually Asus's unique and sustainably created plasma ceramic aluminium lid, which is a very fancy way of saying it's seriously strong, about a thousand times stronger than traditional anodized coatings. This laptop also has 95% humidity resistance, which means I can use it comfortably in the polytunnel, and it's just so lightweight with an excellent battery life. And if I want it charged, I just plug it up to our little solar generator. Just looking at the chart, the closest I can find to Monge 2 is English peas, which is gonna be looking at the actual peas themselves rather than also including the shell or the pod. So a, a poor is eight and an average is 10. Um, so yeah, just taking that into account. The next thing that we're gonna do, which will be very interesting, is I wanna do um, a strawberry comparison um, and you can see the difference. So the homegrown has a lot more seeds around it. And there's also been picked freshly. And I think that's part of the reason why I, I love eating homegrown produce because it's so fresh, it's so sweet. Just like look at that, those fresh peas. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> It's turned the, um, the, what usually the bottom bit is actually um, pink. Uh, but yes, that is, um, that is a nine. Uh, so nine for the homegrown strawberry. So if I'm gonna look here, uh, strawberries, that is above average. So I'm happy with that, above average. Let's now try out the supermarket one. Wow. That's quite a big difference. So that's six. That's quite a big disparity. So yes, homegrown, I'm happy with that. Also, um, I was gonna, comp I'll, I'll do some comparisons with the local organic grow a bit later, uh, but I, I couldn't justify myself paying four pounds 20 for a punnet of strawberries. Uh, so I'm not gonna be testing versus my local organic ones when I've got plenty of my own. Now we're gonna fly through the rest of the things. I'm gonna go with the coriander before it wilts too much, just to see if I can get some juice out of it. All right, so this is um, juiceless coriander. So I'm gonna have to dab it. Sorry, that was so bad. And just see if something registers. I know I shouldn't really use solids, but I'll compare. So that's a, it's very, very light, but that is a five. Cool, so now this is my coriander, and for my friends in America, it's known as cilantro. Oh, feels higher, still faint. I'd give that about six and a half to seven. Another win. <laughs> I'm gonna do that every time, just like, yes, please grow vegetables. Okay, so I got my carrots versus supermarket. So, supermarket carrots. Five and a half. Now for the homegrown carrot. A little bit scared of these. We'll see. Four. So now it's gonna be courgette, aka zucchini, for those of you who don't know what a courgette is. So zucchini from shop. Two. And the closest we have here is squash, and poor is six. Most of these harvests here are from beds that were made about four months ago. So it'd be quite interesting in a future video to then compare it to beds that were made 15 years ago, like in the other garden, to see if there's a, a comparison. One thing I want to mention, this video isn't meant to be taken too seriously. It's to start to open the discussion and look at how we can utilize this better as gardeners, maybe get you interested to do similar comparisons and then see what happens from there. So this is now homegrown courgette. 
little bit better some, not massively. Three and a half, every percentage counts. Let's bear in mind that this is under squash and something like a winter squash, which naturally has a lot more sweetness, would probably get closer to these results. This is uh, quite a watery courgette after all. And that's one of the things that I wish, I, I find it really hard to, to find a, um, a refractive index of just all of the crops. So if anyone knows where I could find one of those, I'd really appreciate it. So next is gonna be spring onion, one that I've grown versus shop. Closest I can get to that is onion on the chart. So that to me appears to be about a 10 for a spring onion. Um, which apparently is excellent. That feels a lot more juicy. So that's completely different. And I can't wait to do the taste test for this. That, that, that I almost don't want to say, but I, I will say, because I'm very honest here, that's a three. Crazy. So I'm going to go for homegrown tomato versus supermarket tomato. These look pretty similar. So uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Also, this is very early in the season. This is a first tomato here that I'm trying, but again, in a bed that's only about four months old. So uh, yeah, let's see what happens. And tomatoes, we're looking at, oh yeah, uh, four is poor, six is average, eight is good. Four. Four on the supermarket. So this is, um, it's like a honeydew or something. It's a slightly different, tomato that tastes really good because i think there's a lot of disparity within varieties and it'll be really interesting over the years to see if there's certain varieties that are just so much more nutrient dense that's gonna be a fun project nine nine that makes quite a big difference Like that. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first one was homegrown. What's this next? Carrots. Carrots. Okay. I'm going to guess the first one's homegrown purely on there's, there is a difference in, in sweetness there. So, of course, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was another carrot, it felt like it. Mm. My least favourite raw vegetable in the world. Oh, I think I like ever so slightly prefer the second one, whatever that second one was. Now, this is going to be hard. Second one is a lot more fiery. So purely out of fl flavor, I like that fiery kick. In fact, there's like more sweetness in the first, but then the second one was sweet at the start and then just turned fiery. Now this is a four or five difference between, so. Um, it's so funny, I've got a blindfold on, but I'm just having my eyes closed to try and taste better. <laughs> so, oh. I think the first one's maybe homegrown. That's a very scary one. If it was a honeydew, I'd be able to tell just by smelling. Well, that does taste home. <laughs> that does taste homegrown because I've been eating those for ages. Yeah, it's pleasant, but because I've just been eating so much moisture, I think the first is homegrown. So, yeah. How do I do? So out of preference, four of them were homegrown and two were from a shop. Interestingly, I think it was uh, the carrots, which I could taste the sweetness, um, and also um, the spring onion with that kind of extra fieriness, which happens to kind of match the, the bricks results, which I think is very, very interesting. I don't recommend you coming over to visit to eat any of my spinach or courgettes. 
But if you want tomatoes and strawberries, you're very, very welcome. I think the main thing to get from this is where there are certain things that aren't really quite ranking as highly as I want to, I can actually look deeper into what might be causing that and compare the same type of crop where we're growing it in other locations using different mulches. And yeah, it's, it's all about that investigation, constantly striving to improve. And it is about flavor after all. I found this really fascinating because the bricks results Four to me, four to the shop. The taste results, I tasted a few less things, but it's equal and they match the bricks. So I think the main takeaway from this, and you can see the, the chart there, the main takeaway from this is that bricks does reflect the, the flavor. Um, you can really taste it. And I'm so excited to continue tasting, especially comparing different varieties, but also things that have been growing in kind of more developed soil. This video right here shows you a Hughes Garden Diaries where we're comparing purple sprouts and broccoli. I think one got 12 and under broccoli, that is an excellent rating. And that's had a lot more like mulch and seaweed and stuff. So check that out. Thank you for watching. And thank you to Asus for sponsoring this video. Find out more about the Zen book below.